The left hook technique is a fascinating combination of power, precision and timing. Its effectiveness lies not only in its ability to deliver useful counter punches, but also in its capacity to create openings for knockouts. The impact of a well executed left hook can be devastating for opponents, making it a valuable tool in the arsenal of any skilled fighter. On September 30th, Canelo Alvarez and Jermel Charlo will go toe to toe in what should be an interesting clash, and for me, two of the best left hookers in the sport, alongside the likes of Inoue. But let's take a look at both men and how they tend to throw their left hook and the technique behind it. Let's start off with Canelo Alvarez. Overall, the Mexican is very versatile with his left hook, throwing short but sometimes wide looping hooks when at close range to his opponent. However, he'll tend to throw those shorter left hooks up close from an angle similar to an uppercut but in between a traditional left hook. And this is mainly so he can look to set up left hooks to the body. Quite often this technique gets referred to being called a shovel hook as it comes from a lowered position and digs up and in towards the intended target. This is, this, they call it the shovel hook. You heard that before? Have we heard the shovel hook? The shovel hook, like the shovel hook, snow. Now Canel likes to throw this punch in various ways. On the inside, he either throws a right hand or right uppercut to tighten, manipulate, or occupy the opponent's guard, while it also gives him the leverage from his right hand to transfer the weight over to his left foot. So, of course, he can throw with power with the left hand. He'll even double up the left hand, but will throw with a lighter punch first to tap the opponent's guard or shift their weight to open the guard up before targeting the body, particularly the liver shot. Uppercuts to get those elbows to fight every time. Well, this is why people are oh, so that's anxious. It. There's knockdown number three. That's enough. That's I don't we'll think you can get up from we'll there. Now, because of the look and the threat of the shovel hook to the body and the punch coming from a lower out of view position, it can instead create openings up top. To throw this punch successfully, you also have to be in range, which Canelo knows himself. And you can see here in his fight versus Golovkin, he's actually stepping in with the punch when throwing. And with his shovel hook coming from a lowered position and looping in with pace, it can be very unpredictable as it looks like it could be a body shot, which you can see obviously Triple G fell for. Not to mention the hip rotation and weight transfer when throwing delivers even more power behind it. Another brilliant aspect of this punch as seen versus Kovalev is it is a brilliant punch to throw around the high guard. Now in the same round Canelo would knock out the Russian, he was already testing with this punch as the Mexican was going around Kovalev's high guard, picking up that he was instead blocking to protect his temple and face. And with the Russian clearly feeling the pace of the fight at this point, he was not timing or blocking those hooks. Instead, quickly looking to cover up with the high guard, like with any type of guard, has its pros and cons in its positioning. And with Canelo pushing the pace just before the knockout, you can see the Mexican had already landed this punch before giving it another go with more power the second time and doing the damage. Once again, coming from that lower position out of view, going around the high guard and was enough to do the damage for the final finish. Another interesting aspect of Canelo's left hook was against a more Philly Shell style user in Caleb Plant. In this fight we saw him use the double left hook tremendously well, as Plant would bend at his waist to his right, and this would give him the perfect chance to land to the body or guard, double up the left hook, once again creating further opportunities or further openings down the line. But it was the punch in the 11th round that would really hurt Plant, and it was Canelo's use of that gazelle hook. And being the smaller man, he needed to quickly close the range at times, and the gazelle punch is terrific at doing so. Not only does it help you close the distance, but it's thrown with power due to the weight transfer from the legs, creating the explosiveness needed. It's no wonder Plant felt the impact of the punch. And as seen in the previous rounds, Canelo tended to go to the body initially, with the left hook, due to the unpredictability of where it would land next. Will it be body or head? But now let's take a look at how Charlo utilises his left hook. For me, this is one of Jermel Charlo's best punches. Throughout his whole career to date, 
He's always been outstanding with it and often set him apart from the competition at times. Charlo overall throws the left hook thumbs up in a looping motion with precision, speed and power, but usually from a more traditional angle compared to Canelo's looping shovel hook, while Charlo will instead look to counter with this punch instead of a direct attack like Canelo. While he also loves to switch from body to head and vice versa in a single combination, often catching opponents off guard on the inside. Now the counter you will often see him use is by waiting to time and slip an opponent's jab while also even doing the same with the right hand before countering back with the left hook with power. In his fight versus Rosario, he instead looked to parry away the jab with his right hand moving to his right off the center line and instead looking to counter back with a looping left hook. Obviously this requires good timing in itself, but it shows that Charlo's ring IQ is up there with the best as he is very aware of the punches being thrown at him. Now the other left hook Charlo throws is to the body. Go by the way. And he said, oh, oh, nice God. left hook rip to the body by Charlo. Where he expertly disguises the true target of the hook by using the same start up motion of bending to his left, putting the weight on the front foot before throwing and rotating through to generate the power. Now Charlo mixes up the location so he isn't always telegraphing this punch, otherwise he would get caught out a lot more using this. In his second fight versus Harrison, it was a brilliant example of him doing this. After hurting him early in the first round with the left hook, this was the go-to punch for Charlo. But he's got to throw not only the right hand, but uh, the left hook as well, because that was, that was what hurt Harrison in the first and second round, so he's got to go to that again. So for Charlo's second knockdown, we saw him use the brilliant double left hook, which helped to open up Harrison himself, as he also went for the left hook. Now Harrison does clip Charlo with his own, so in that respect, you need to respect the chin of Charlo. But in boxing, quite often taking a hit sometimes opens up an opportunity, as much as I would never recommend this. Now for the third and final knockdown, once again, you will see that slight dip to the left, helping to disguise the punch up top. Obviously Harrison had just been hurt, so this time, instead of Jermel going to the body first, he goes up top. Now you can even see Harrison bracing himself for the body shot, but it just shows the incredible awareness of Jermel to pick this up. And of course, after hurting Harrison, was able to finish off the job. Finally, it's important to discuss how the left hook played a factor in the fights versus Brian Castaño, and he was up against a much more brawler swarmer style and was often forced to fight in the inside. But with this comes opportunities. And with the Argentine looking to put the pressure on Charlo, Charlo was able to execute his block and left hook counter. And he did this by waiting for Castaño to throw the right hand to his left glove and return with a counter on the same side immediately after the attack was blocked. As the Argentine had committed with his punch, the counter left hook is very hard to defend after this. And there's a big right hand that connected for Jamel. Interestingly, we saw Canelo get caught with a very similar counter when he faced Bivol. And if Canelo rushes in the same way in this fight, I wouldn't be surprised if Charlo sets him up here. Well, interestingly, if we look at the rematch once again, it was a short left hook that did the damage on the inside versus Castaño. Charlo, like I showed with Canelo, throws the right hand on the inside, helping transfer the weight over and naturally create that leverage for the follow-up left hook with power. And although Charlo is not really an inside fighter, he's still very much able to generate the power and accuracy from those positions. And with Castaño feeling the power of Charlo's left hook, it didn't take Jermel long to finish him off with a nice head-body combo and of course a left hook to finish off the job for him to become undisputed. Overall it's clear to see that both have very good use of the left hook and it'll be fascinating to see if the left hook will play a factor in this fight. Now they obviously have different attributes than just this punch that will play a factor in the fight but I can't help but admire the technique, timing, power and intelligence they both have when using this punch and maybe this could just be the determining punch in this contest but yeah i'd love to hear your thoughts on who you think has the better left hook and do you think this could swing the balance in the fight on september 30th i'd love to know this has been jamie from boxing life 
Thank you so much for watching, and as always, guys, I'll see you in the next one.